When I go shopping for horses at auction, my favorite place to go is to the loose pen. Loose horses are sold with little to no information. When people need to sell a horse quickly, this is usually how they do it. Often the most at-risk horses are unhandled stallions. This horse immediately caught my eye when I saw him at the sale barn. I was there the day before the sale just previewing horses for a friend. As I drove home, I just couldn't get this guy out of my mind. I could tell he hadn't been handled much and he did have some issues with his feet. I still thought it would be silly for this guy to ship to slaughter, so I messaged a friend and asked her to bid on him for me if it looked like he was going to get bought by a kill buyer. The next day I got a message saying that the horse sold for $300 and I needed to come pick him up. He was the absolute worst horse that I have ever hauled home from a sale. It was a little bit dicey getting him in and off of the trailer as well because he had not been handled very much. I remember the first couple of days that I had him home, I was really questioning whether or not I should have taken a chance on this guy. He was covered in ticks and his feet were a lot worse than I had initially thought. Overall, he seemed really healthy, so after two weeks of quarantine, I started right in getting him ready to have his first hoof trim with me. I did end up contacting the person that brought him to the sale. They told me a bunch of information about the horse and they had a fantastical story about how he came to the sale, which typically means that none of it is true. After some sleuthing on the internet, I found the guy that dropped him off at the sale also has an auction barn in the Midwest. The most likely scenario is his original owners dropped him off at that auction barn where he would have sold for very little money after which he probably hitched a ride to Montana with another large load of horses with the hopes of selling him for a profit at a larger sale. It had been several years since this guy has had his feet worked on. He was really reluctant to hold his feet up or use the stand in any way to help me out. So I decided to dig a little trench around his hoof and then nipper off all of the excess hoof. This is a very precarious place to be in with an unknown horse. He was not very reactive and very sweet even though he was a stallion and it was really important to get his feet under control. I decided to call him Studman until I could think of a better name. He was able to go out in a small pasture by himself. He did have a very large parasite burden when I got him. These are botfly larvae. The vast majority of horses that I get from loose sales have some kind of parasite that need to be taken care of. When I get stallions in, typically I like them to be fully vaccinated before I go ahead and geld them. I only have one mare at the time and he didn't seem to be too distracted by her. He was more worried about the other little stallion that I had and they usually talked back and forth quite a bit. After about a month, we had fallen into a routine and he had really quieted down quite a bit. I was hosting a clinic in about a month that I was trying to get him ready for. At this time, I also had another stallion that I had saved from a different auction that needed to be gelded. Both of their surgeries went off without a hitch and they were recovered in time to participate in the clinic. If you guys have been watching my channel, that is actually Skeletor. I used him for the clinic. He is quite thin there. During the clinic, I did have the opportunity to get Studman's feet x-rayed just to check to make sure everything was okay. I was really happy with how his feet were coming along, but there was something that was concerning. This is a little calcified spot at the tip of his coffin bone that is not supposed to be there. They are a result of his feet being at the incorrect angle for a very long period of time. This will be something that I'll have to keep in mind throughout his rehab. It is likely that he would benefit from some kind of support. So after the clinic, I went ahead and fit him with a temporary shoe. This is casting material and it's just like the stuff you get on your arm if you break a bone. He also got a pour and pad underneath the shoe. It basically served as a synthetic frog to dampen any concussive forces while protecting the area underneath that little bone chip. It was amazing to see how instantly this changed his posture. With a better plan for his feet in place, I was finally able to start turning him out. He was now gelded and fully vaccinated and he was moving very soundly. When I took this video, he had actually just pulled off one of his temporary shoes so he has one boot and one shoe on at this point. I do think he was experiencing some sort of pain from his feet because he was moving around a lot more after his shoes were put on. This was actually the first time that I saw him play and jump around. 
I really like my rehab horses to have enough time to let their mind relax as well as heal their bodies. So it's really important that these guys have friends as soon as they're able to. I had thought about putting him out with Whiplash and Goose, which are the horses he was next to now. But in the end, I decided it might be better if he went out with a little bit bigger herd. A little over three months after I got him, I put him out with a herd of geldings. This was Little Gus, Gus, and Pete is the dark one. Studman was just so happy to be out on grass, he didn't really cause any trouble between the other horses. Turning a recently gelded stud out with a bunch of new horses can be a tricky thing to do. The other three horses that he got turned out with are pretty even keeled. None of them are overly aggressive and a lot of them are just happy to be out grazing. So it only took them about 10 minutes to settle down and he was happy with his new little herd. I was really surprised to see that him and little Gus were getting along really well. Little Gus was purchased from the same sale that I got Studman from. They are both pretty short horses. I want to say they're maybe 14 hands. After he got integrated with the herd, it was time for me to test out and see what this guy knew. He was a very interesting combination of cool and collected and then he would startle easily at a few different things I did not expect him to. He did a lot of things that I would expect a horse that has never been saddled before to do, but he did stand relatively well for everything which could just be his age. He did bronc around for quite a bit which doesn't really bother me, I just let them move forward and figure out that the saddle isn't going to hurt them. His teeth aged him at about 5 years old. In my experience, horses from the loose pen that act this way at this age may have been started but very poorly. So maybe someone saddled them and then tried to ride them and fell off and decided, oh, this horse isn't worth my time. After seeing how he acted for the saddling process, I decided I'm just going to go ahead and restart this guy. I did want to make sure that I got his shoeing package figured out. I tested all kinds of different glue-on shoes throughout the winter. These are actually Gus's feet. Him and Studman wore these glue-on shoes for most of the winter and spring. After I had had him for about a year, I thought that Studman's feet were good enough to go barefoot again. So pretty much this whole summer he was barefoot. I was hoping to get him started under saddle this fall, but it is finally winter in Montana. Recently, Studman has been helping Skeletor figure out how to act in a herd. I purchased Skeletor a few months before I got Studman from a different auction, so they have pretty much known each other the whole time they've been on my place. They have stalls next to each other in the barn for the winter and then they get turned out twice a day just so they can run around and stretch their legs. Even though getting an unhandled stud from an auction can be a lot more work, when all the hard parts are done and you're able to see them run and buck and play, it makes it totally worth it. It may seem silly to have given this guy 18 months of rehab, but I think it was the perfect amount of time to make sure he made a full recovery. Drop a comment below on which horse you're more excited to see be started under saddle, Skeletor or Studman. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video.